How's it going, people? I picked up a little uh, something special. It's uh, <laughs> damnation. <laughs> Russian River Brewing Company. Wow, this is like it's like harnessed in with <laughs> with expecting it to explode or something like a champagne bottle. This is supposed to be beer, isn't it? Fermented in this bottle. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why I'm opening this. There's nothing to drink to in this chapter. But I'm going to read it anyway. I'm afraid it's going to go, you know, Happy New Year's on me. All right, no, it didn't do that. <laughs> it's got a cork and all that. Boy, this is a beer that takes itself seriously. Damnation. <laughs> uh, chapter 6 of 2nd Nephi. Here we start... I mean, it's not just that they're ripping off Isaiah, but that they're actually ripping off Isaiah that they've already ripped off. I'll explain as we go along. It's pitiful, trust me. Let's try this damnation. Mm. Damnation never tasted so good. This is really nice. Fermented in the bottle. Golden ale. I should have poured this in a glass. Oh, well. All right. Here we go. The words of Jacob. See, Lehi died in the last, uh, well, he actually died in chapter 4. Chapter 5, things came to pass. Now Jacob is going to start eating up the scenery. Uh, <laughs> the penultimate son of Lehi. The words of Jacob, the brother of Nephi, which he spake unto the people of Nephi, because as you saw in chapter 5, they slipped off from uh, Laman and uh, Lemuel <laughs> and the gang, and Laman and Lemuel and all their ilk. They became dark-skinned. That was their curse. Dark-skinned, idle, loathsome, cunning. Uh, I forgot what else. <clears throat> so now, now Jacob is like uh, that. He's been uh, appointed as a uh, a priest. He's He's figured he's got a new audience, you know. I mean, Laman and uh, Lemuel, they got the speech in uh, oh, First Nephi uh, twenty-one, where Isaiah forty-nine was basically ripped off in its entirety with just minor modifications. Well, chapter six, it's sections of Isaiah forty-nine that were already in First Nephi, chapter twenty-one. Go figure. I mean, it's a gold book, and they're, they're repeating something again. So anyway, yeah. The words of Jacob, the brother of Nephi, which he spake unto the people of Nephi, Behold, my beloved brethren, beloved brethren, I, Jacob, having been called of God, and ordained after the manner of his holy order, and having been consecrated by my brother Nephi, a little nepotism there. I guess that doesn't exist on that uh, continent, does it? <laughs> They're pretty much all related. <laughs> I bro consecrated by my brother Nephi, unto whom ye look as a king or a protector, and on whom ye depend 
for safety. Behold, ye know that I have spoken unto you exceedingly many things. Hmm, thought this would be harsh. It's very nice. It's kind of also, I don't know, kind of a perfumey, flowery, kind of a, hmm, I don't know, it's awesome. I like it. A little expensive for drinking all the time. I mean, it's got its own cork and everything. <sighs> Nevertheless, I speak unto you again, for I am desirous for the welfare of your souls. Yea, mine anxiety is great for you, and ye yourselves know that it ever has been. For I have exhorted you with all diligence, and I have taught you the words of my father. See, because it's like 40 years after they left Jerusalem, so, you know, and they've already had wars and stuff. I mean, as they squeezed, Nephi squeezed into the end of chapter 5. <laughs> For I have exhorted you with all diligence, and I have taught you the words of my Father, and I have spoken unto you concerning all things which are written from the creation of the world. And now, behold, I would speak unto you concerning things which are, and which are to come. Wherefore, I will read you the words of Isaiah. Isaiah 49, basically. Actually, uh, Isaiah 49, 22 through 23. Then he cuts it off, leaves part of it out, <laughs> starts paraphrasing a whole bunch of it, and then continues with, uh, um, yeah, Isaiah 24 through 26. <laughs> and, you know, he doesn't italicize or anything, so you don't know when he does. The only reason why I know is I've got it highlighted <laughs> compared to uh, this book. And if I think I got time, I'll point out some of the changes. Yeah. <sighs> and they are the words which my brother has desired that I should speak unto you. Because it was really a hit with Laman and Lemuel. Chapter 49 of Isaiah, with a few additions. <laughs> and I speak unto you for your sakes, that ye may learn and glorify the name of your God. And now the words which I shall read are they which Isaiah spake concerning all the house of Israel, Wherefore, they may be likened unto you, for ye are of the house of Israel. And there are many things which have been spoken by Isaiah, which may be likened unto you. Because ye are the house of Israel. And these are... Th and these are the words. And now we get start with Isaiah 49, 22 through 23. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles. That's, you know, Isaiah 49, verse 22. An awful lot skipped. <laughs> yeah, hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and the kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and the queens thy nursing mothers. Sound familiar? Yeah, that was uh, 1 Nephi chapter 21. See, we got to write all this shit down twice, not only in a brass book, but in this gold book. And they shall bow down to thee with their faces towards the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. 
because you're a Latter-day Saint. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. And <laughs> that's the end of uh, Isaiah until the end of this uh, chapter where we resume that interrupted uh, rant. <laughs> and now I, Jacob, see we're back in their time again, would speak somewhat concerning these words. Yeah, explain it to us, uh, Jacob. For behold, the Lord has shown me that those who were at Jerusalem from whence we came have been slain and carried away captive. They've been slain and carried away captive. They've been turned into zombies to work in the cane fields. <laughs> I know what you mean, but fuck, man. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, all these years, Jacob, years later, Jacob, the grandson of Lehi, with his vision, has confirmed not only Lehi's vision, but Lehi's confirmation vision. And I think Nehi also confirmed it with a, a vision. Boy, they get a lot done in their dreams. They don't waste a second of their life. Except when they got to take a dump, but you'll never hear about that in this gold book. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, the Lord has shown me, shown unto me, that they should return again. And he also has shown unto me that the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, should manifest himself unto them in the flesh. And after he should manifest himself, they should scourge him and crucify him according to the words of the angel who spake it unto me. And this is Jacob the grandson of Lehi. Just in case you don't get confused and think that that was uh, Isaiah. Mm, that's nice. And after they... Wait. Yeah. And after they had hardened their hearts and stiffened their necks against the Holy One of Israel, behold, the judgments of the Holy One of Israel shall come upon them. And the day cometh that they shall be smitten and afflicted. Wherefore, after they are driven to and fro, hopefully not at the same time, because that would be real tough, for thus saith the angel, is that Gabriel? He's a practical joker, isn't he? <laughs> Jokes on everybody. Many shall be afflicted in the flesh. Yeah, tell us about it. And shall not be suffered to perish because of the prayers of the faithful, they shall be scattered and smitten and hated. Nevertheless, the Lord will be merciful unto them. Sounds like it. <laughs> that when they shall come to the knowledge of their Redeemer, they shall be gathered together again to the lands of their inheritance. Oh. And blessed are the Gentiles. This is not Isaiah talking, just want you to know that. They used Isaiah as bread, and all this bullshit is the bologna that they uh, put between the bread. This is a bologna sandwich. <laughs> yeah, two slices of Isaiah with a bunch of bologna in the middle. <laughs> and blessed are the Gentiles. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They of whom the prophet has written, for behold, if it be, if it so be, that they shall repent and fight not against Zion, and do not unite themselves 
to that great and abominable church, which Isaiah doesn't seem to be talking about, <laughs> they shall be saved. For the Lord God will fulfill his covenants, which he has made unto his children. And for this cause the prophet has written these things. I'm not sure which one. Are they saying Isaiah put all those words down? Because why aren't you just quoting Isaiah? It's paraphrasing. Wherefore, they that fight against Zion and the covenant people of the Lord shall lick up the dust of their feet. Well, now we're just borrowing language. And the people of the Lord shall not be ashamed. Sounds pretty shameful to me. I'm not into foot fetishes, you know. Just highly suggestible. <laughs> yeah. For the people of the Lord uh, are they who wait for him. For they shall wait for the coming of the Messiah. And behold, according to the words of the prophet, the Messiah will set himself again the second time to recover uh, them. Wherefore, he will manifest himself unto them in power and great glory unto the destruction of their enemies. When that day cometh, when they shall believe in him. And none will be destroyed that believe in him. Mm, damnation. Very nice. And they that believe not in him shall be destroyed, both by fire and by tempest, and by earthquakes, and by bloodsheds, and by pestilence, and by famine. And they shall know that the Lord is God, the Holy One of Israel. First shell, oh, we're back at, to uh, Isaiah 49. Now it's Isaiah 24. So this is the other slice. Of, we're done with the baloney in between. For shell, you know, the rest of this chapter is Isaiah, you know, uh, 24 through 26. For shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered but <coughs> hmm. uh, but thus saith the Lord even the captives of the mighty mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered now right in the middle of all this Isaiah he leaves out part of what Isaiah said and adds in his own words. For the mighty God shall deliver his covenant people. For thus saith the Lord. And he gets right back into uh, Isaiah. Let's see what he really said. Uh, um, uh -huh. So basically what he does is just uh, adds us in. It doesn't say anything at that point. He leaves another part out. For the mighty God shall deliver his covenant people. For thus saith the Lord. Now we're back to Isaiah. I will contend with them that contendeth with thee. Then there's a dash. And since they're quote mining, they leave out a section. And this is what they leave out. Uh, I will contend with them that contend with thee, and I will save thy children. They left that out. I don't know why. But then they resume right into 20, verse 26. And the final verse of Isaiah 49, and the final verse of Second Nephi, and the final verse of First Nephi, verse uh, chapter 21. Uh, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Remember that? And they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. 
and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. <laughs> but not this Jacob. <laughs> Anyhow, there wasn't much to drink about there, but this is really nice. All right, well, I'll see you in verse 7. Peace.